Hello, Zach here with AI Automation Elite. Today we're talking Claude, specifically Claude Dev, the 3.5 Sonnet agentic coding tool that's available in VS Code. And so let's go ahead and get started. While we're doing that, if you would like and subscribe, and if you're interested in learning more about AI and automation for your business, or how to use it as a developer in order to grow your income and your resume, feel free to check out my new school. Uh, the link is in the description. All right, so here is the URL for the GitHub, and it'll be available in the description as well. And it's called Claude Dev, and it is a simple plugin or extension in VS Code. And the only thing that it requires once you install it, and we'll kind of go through that real quick, is an API key from Claude. And you can get that from anthropic.com slash API. Get the API key and you'll be ready to go. I'm not gonna spend much time inside of here. This is how to install it if you don't want to use the VS Code extension, but we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so if we come here and I don't need source code, so I just have a folder, I just called it Claude Dev Test. Uh, I tested here earlier on a RAG app just to see. We're gonna do a couple of different tests. So the first thing you need to do is come to Extensions and up here just do a search for Claude and you'll see Claude Dev. Looks like this, basic instructions, the details here, same as what's available on the GitHub. Now it does have this pro tip to open the command palette right here which is kind of cool. If you're a fan of shortcuts, Command Shift P works great. All right, the next thing, once you have installed it, the next thing is you'll get this little icon, Claude Dev, and the first time you open it, it'll have a different screen than this, and it'll just ask you for your Anthropic API key. Once you've set that up, you'll just get the new key, copy it into here, tell it let's go, and you're ready. All right, so, Thanks to the 3.5 Sonnet agentic coding capabilities, I can handle all kinds of stuff. And the nice thing is it requests your permission to run anything in terminal, to create new code, and it works on a diff engine, like uh, basically a GitHub diff engine, all right? So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start something simple. Let's say create a new folder for a JavaScript HTML and CSS game of tic-tac-toe. Include all the JS, HTML, and CSS inside of that file. I haven't tried that before. Oops, let's say that folder so that we're clear. Let's go ahead and take a look. Now notice it's already starting and it's making the API request and it will tell us the number of tokens and the API cost. This is what's going to be deducted from your Anthropic uh, balance. All right, so we'll give it a moment and let's see what it does. All right, so we have certainly, I'll create a new folder uh, on here. We need to create a folder, so this is the thinking process. We need to create three files, index styles and script, looks good. We need to write the content for each of these files and the write to file tool can be used in both to create both folders and files, all right? And so here's what it wants, right? This is the diff engine look here. So this is the original, which is blank, right? This is what we will accept in a moment. And it wants to create a new file, tic-tac-toe index.html. So let's approve it. Now it wants to create a CSS. And again, here's all of our CSS, looks pretty standard. All right, and finally it wants the JS, and this looks pretty good too. All right, let's go ahead and prove that. Great, now we have this running, and so the API is making another request. Notice we're at three, almost four cents so far, and let's see what else it says. Uh, here's the cost of that, so this next one was two, uh, two cents, so we're up to six cents. All right, created the folder, created three files, the game is ready to play. Here's a brief overview, and it says the task is complete. Now it says run command. So let's run that. And that is on a new screen, so let me just bring that over here. And let's see here. All right, so 
X's turn. I'll be X, O. Let's see, I'll go here, O. Let's say I go here, O. All right, restart game. That's pretty good off the, off the top. All right, let's see here. All right, X wins. So now let's think about this. Maybe we would like to, let's come back over here. Actually, I think it'll, it'll do a new open. Let's test that. So we'll close this. And so we can say start a new task, right? Or type a message. So we're going to type include a scorer that tracks each player's wins. A master reset that starts, starts uh, if I can spell, starts it all fresh. All right, let's see here. So hopefully what it should do is ask us for permission to then go in and check the file that it decides, or the files that it decides it needs to modify. And ooh, look at that, all right, so we have the diff engine. So now it wants to add a scoreboard div class with player one, oh, player zero, player X, that's nice, and this is where it replaced it. So let's go ahead and approve that. It also wants to add some CSS, let's approve that. And finally, it also wants to change the script here, master reset button sets the scores at an initial value. Great. And so the big question is, what does this do for developers? Well, obviously you can get places quickly. Is it production grade? No. And so you would want to still be able to go through here and confirm that it's doing what you want, be able to uh, properly test and that kind of thing. But it gets you started very quickly. All right, let's go ahead and run the command or run command and it opened down the new screen again. Let's bring it over here. So now we have tic-tac-toe zero zero. All right, let's go. X O X O. Great. So restart, X, great, lovely. All right, let's try one more, great. And master reset, back to zero. Is this production grade? No. Is this ready to have fun to get you started? Could you use this to get you started? Absolutely, you could. Absolutely, you can talk to it. Clearly, it has the ability to work inside of its own environment and know what it's built, so that is excellent let's go ahead and say start a new task and let's go over here and look at our file structure right everything is in tic-tac-toe like it's supposed to let's go ahead and do a new one let's do a python file all right so this time let's go ahead and do python let's say create a snake game they use a snake game in javascript as their demo but let's do create snake game in python that includes css and HTML. Actually, let's do this. Create a snake game in Python. Create a, we better tell it to do a folder. Actually, let's see how well it works. Let's say this will be in a new folder called, I guess let's just call it snake. All right, let's test it. So notice before we spent about 17 cents. So uh, not too bad. Looking at the code here arrow functions as our callbacks nice overall looks pretty good I'm sure we could have told it to do tailwind or something similar actually we should try that with our snake game actually go ahead and close this let it run through for a moment all right so four cents here's our Python game so it wants to create a folder Create an HTML, create CSS, create a Python file for the logic, and create a JavaScript game to bridge Python. See, we did not tell it that. It just went ahead and knew what to do. Excellent. Let's approve it. All right. Let's approve this. That's good. Let's approve it. And now it's making another request. All right. So it has this browser install package. Let's see. So it wants to install that, it looks like. But let's take a look. Let's run it. Opened up. So let's come over here. All right, start game. So we're not getting any interactivity from it, right? So let's go ahead and say the oops game does not do anything. Let's spell that correctly. Anything when I click start game. Now I imagine it's because we need to do a 
pip install and some other stuff here. So we're going to let it see here. Probably the reason why they don't like to demo the... Okay, I apologize for the oversight. Seems is not functioning correctly. Let's see the changes on load Python. So we're going to ask it. We're going to find out here. Let's see if it recognizes that it needs to do a package install. I'm assuming that's what it is. Let's take a look. Um, could not be resolved. I think that's probably a Python package. Sure is thinking hard. It's working. So we'll give it another moment. All right. So it says here, it wants to change that can't to a canvas. All right, well, let's see. So that was a four cent call, right? Working. <laughs> I know it's not the funnest thing. Wow, lots of changes. So now it wants to run this command again. And it opened a new one, so let's take a look at it and see. So again, no interactivity. Now, I suspect that's the reason for it, but let's ask, let's see here. Let's go ahead and create a virtual environment. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's say dash M V E and V. Since we haven't tested this, we don't necessarily know. So create it, and then let's go ahead and uh, we're blanked out for a second. Source, oops, and we'll do a Hip list, nothing in there. Let's see if that happens. Let's see if we can install browser. Let's see what it does. Nope. So let's say what Python packages need to be installed using pip. So as you can see, not completely production ready. You cannot turn it loose on the world, but what you can do is get a good jump start. Let's see here. So at this point, it's stuck, right? And it wants to run the command again, and there's still nothing happening if we look at its version. So we would have to spend some more time diagnosing it. This is not an endorsement nor a plaint on these tools. This was very beneficial, probably something simple. Uh, we, we need to, let's see, a stub package. Maybe you're using the wrong PyPy, right? So we'd have to do a little bit of research to figure out what the package is here because that is not the package. But it gives you a good start, lets you know some of the capabilities, and I wish you luck. Once again, thanks for your time. Like and subscribe, and if you're interested in learning more, check out our school in the description. Have a great day.